Hello and welcome to Zabbix series. In this video, we'll take a look at the upgrade process when upgrading to Zabbix 6.0 LTS. Here on my screen, you can see I have a small instance prepared for you, version 5.0.21, that we are going to upgrade to version 6.0 LTS and also take a look at some of the new features you can see. None of the Zabbix 6.0 features are available here for me. No user roles, no fancy widgets on dashboards, no security settings under authentication when it comes to passwords, none of that. So that's why we will upgrade this to 6.0 and then take another look at it. Okay, let's first open up the documentation. And here, first thing that we can see is we are currently on 5.0 LTS. And that means if we're upgrading to 6.0, we will also be including the features from versions 5.2, 5.4, and of course, 6.0. That means you have to ideally read through all of the release notes for these versions, just so you're aware of what's going to get changed. Okay, next let's switch to upgrade notes for Zabbix 6.0. And here we have two sets of notes. We have critical notes and we have informational notes. We're just going to go through some of the critical ones that affect us. First off, database requirements. So database requirements have been upped. The required versions are now newer, better, faster. And in my case, I will be using my SQL 8. Make sure that your version is supported. If not, first schedule a database upgrade before you move on with Zabbix upgrade. Same goes for your OS. Make sure that your OS is both supported by Zabbix and the OS vendor. If not, then consider either upgrading your OS or migrating to a different OS. Another feature that we can see here is primary keys. Primary keys are now used for all tables, including history tables. So this means that history tables can now have primary keys that improves their performance and reduces their size. This has to be done manually after the upgrade. So this isn't the part of the upgrade process. This has to be done manually. We will take a look at it once we are done with the upgrade. But I suggest first doing this in a QA environment in your case, because this here primary key upgrade for history tables, it can take a lot of time and a lot of time when upgrading means a large downtime. So test it in QA, try and estimate your downtime there, and then actually you can proceed with implementing it in production. But this is a completely optional upgrade also. Okay, now that we are ready, let's take a look at the upgrade procedure itself. So here on the same upgrade page for uh, Red Hat, uh, Enterprise Linux and CentOS. We will be using Oracle Linux, by the way, which can follow the same steps. We can see the upgrade procedure. First off, of course, we stop the Zabbix server and Zabbix proxy. Don't forget, if you're using Zabbix proxies, they are not backwards compatible. So you will need to also upgrade your Zabbix proxies. Ask your colleagues to help you here or use some automated scripts to upgrade your proxies so it just happens faster in parallel to upgrading Zabbix server. Then ideally we need to perform backups, backup your existing database or create a snapshot of it, backup your configuration files for Zabbix, for your web server, for the front end, then the PHP files and the binaries. The config files can be a bit tricky here uh, because of course they change between different versions. New parameters, such as if we look for high availability here, such as HA node name are supported in Zabbix 6.0 but if you're using the old config file, of course, you will need to add them manually. In my case, I will be using RPM and RPM will create an RPM new file with these here new settings, while the old file will remain untouched, which is good for me. I can always read the documentation and add what needs to be added manually. If I want to add HA, I can add HA node name manually to the config file and a bunch of other parameters that get ad added between versions. All right, let's move back to the documentation. So once we have backed everything up, our next step is updating the repository for Zabbix, upgrading it to 6.0, and then upgrading individual components. And potentially, if you're using an older version of Zabbix, you might also have to install this here Zabbix Apache or Nginx conf package, which used to be uh, excluded. It's, it's relatively new from the older installs. So if you don't have it, install it. All right, then review the configuration, start Zabbix processes, take a look at your log files, follow the database upgrade, and you're good to go. 
I think we can switch back to our command line and we can actually start over here. So let's begin. Our first step will be essentially let's check what we have here MySQL D version. So MySQL 8 HTTP version. Uh, let's see. So we're running Apache 2.4.37 and of course Zabbix underscore server version Zabbix 5.0.21. All right. So that's my environment. Also, I will take a look at my OS, etc OS release. So Oracle 8.5. All right. So first things first, let's stop Zabbix server. System control stop Zabbix server. It's been stopped. Great. And now let's install Zabbix 6.0 repository. Let's install it. And then the good practice would be cleaning your DNF cache, DNF clean all and also rebuilding it, DNF make cache. Um, this is a good practice because otherwise you could run into a situation where you're upgrading your Zabbix server, for example, but you will see the DNF says, hey, there is no new version available because it has cached some old information from the old repositories. And that's why we are cleaning it out and then rebuilding it with the make cache command. So this way our servers will be upgraded 100% without any bogus warning messages about no new versions being available. Now we can do DNF upgrade, Zabbix server MySQL, and Zabbix web MySQL. And I will also pass a yes to it. I am not upgrading my agent right now on purpose. Just so you guys can remember, agent upgrades are optional, agents are backwards compatible. It will still work, 5.0 agent will still be perfectly fine. All right, now let's start system control start Zabbix server it has been started and what is happening under the hood if we look at var log Zabbix Zabbix server we can see that currently there is a database upgrade going on so once Zabbix server is started what it does is it upgrades the database table structure so it fits the latest version requirements and it does so autonomously the larger the database of course the longer it takes it's a bunch of SQL queries that run under the hood, but this is completely automated. Let's take a look at it. Boom, it has been upgraded. Great. But we see a weird message here. We see database could be upgraded to use primary keys in history tables. What does this mean? This implies, this message implies that we could still potentially upgrade our history tables for primary key support. And this is something that we will do in a moment. Another thing that I like to do is RPM QA grep Zabbix and checking the installed packages just to confirm that everything has been upgraded. And I can see everything but the agent has been upgraded. And at this point I can choose, do I wish to upgrade the agent or not? For the sake of the exercise, let's do DNF upgrade Zabbix agent. Also agree to it. It'll be a quick agent upgrade. So now our agent also supports all of the 6.0 features, but we could have stayed with the previous version, no problem. All right, let's switch back. Let's exit our full screen mode and let's switch back to our front end and let's re-log into our Zabbix instance. And let's take a look at some of the new features that we have available here. So first off on my dashboard, I can now place a geo map, for example, or a top hosts widget or the SLA report, right? Some of the new widgets. So let me just place a quick geo map. I can see my three hosts here. I can save it, I can zoom in on my hosts, and for example, set this as the initial view. If I also go into administration authentication, I can see that I now have password policy options. In user roles, I now have a bunch of new roles, four new standard roles to which my users have been added, and I can create a new role, restrict some things on it, change its user type, and assign users to it. All features new to Zabbix 6.0 when comparing it with 5.0. Some of these were added in 6.0. Some of these were added between 5.0 and 6.0 release in other major versions. All right, so we have successfully upgraded. You also see that our front end in 6.0.2. Yes, that's correct. But one thing remains. It's the optional database upgrade to primary keys. We're talking about history tables here. We can upgrade our history tables so they use primary keys. All right, if I look at my SQL, I have my SQL, I see a couple of steps. These steps are recommended to be executed in Tmux or in screen, so we don't get disconnected from our session. We don't time out. 
I have tmux pre-installed and also since we'll be using MySQL shell, I have MySQL shell pre-installed here. So these commands consist of a couple of steps. First off, we will execute a script available in one of these Abix packages to create a new set of tables, a new set of history tables that have primary keys defined on them. Then we will migrate the data and this can take an extremely long amount of time, especially if you have a large instance. So that's why I test it in QA first. And we'll migrate this data from old tables to new tables. This is what's happening over here. Then we will drop the old tables and we will be good to go. So let's try and do this optional upgrade because many people have been wondering, how do you do it? All right, so first things first, let's stop our Zabbix server once again. System control stop Zabbix server. There we go. Stopping, give it a moment, flushing all data to the database. And now let's install the package, DNF install Zabbix SQL scripts. This package, it contains a bunch of install scripts, um, essentially scripts that create the initial database schema and also our upgrade script for the history tables. The scripts are located under user share doc Zabbix SQL scripts and then our database version, our database vendor. In my case, it's my SQL. So I will navigate here. We can do a list command and we can take a look at our history PK prepare script. What does it actually do? So what it does is really simple. It renames history tables to history old tables, and then it creates a new set of history tables that have primary key based on item ID, clock, and nanoseconds. So really simple, really quick. And in our documentation page, we have a command that I'm going to copy right now that applies this script in our database table. So here's the script, here's the MySQL user, password, database. Let's execute it. Once we have done this, we now have a new set of history tables. Now what we can do is we can log into MySQL and before we proceed, our next step will be migrating our information from the old tables to the new tables. Essentially we'll be executing this here set of commands. So what does it do? Actually it's also simple. It exports the data from the old tables to var lib mysql files into a csv file and then we take that csv file and import the contents of the csv file into our newly created history tables and we do this for each history table history history uint history string history log and history text to execute the script what we have to do Beforehand is I have to enable one MySQL option. I have to set the local in file to true. By default, it's false because it enables some potential attack vectors, but I will temporarily enable it because I need to enable it to import my data from the old tables to the new history tables. Let's set it to true and then quit. And now we can open tmux. Okay, and from tmux, I am going to open my SQL shell. The command to do so is available in documentation. So I am opening my SQL shell in the classic mode under the root user. My root user has no password requirements if executed from localhost and I am accessing the Zabbix database. And from here, what we can do is we can simply take these commands and we can copy them. I will zoom out a bit just so you can see how they look like and they are being executed one after another. And there are no error messages. No error messages, everything seems to be successful. So we have migrated our data. This was really quick because I have a small QA instance. In real life, I suggest you test it out with your production data because it can take hours and hours. And meanwhile, our Zabbix server is stopped while this is happening, right? All right. Now we can quit from MySQL shell. We can exit from tmux. And what we need to do the final thing that we need to do is we need to log into MySQL, MySQL root, and we need to drop our old database tables. I will take a look at my Zabbix instance. I know that my server isn't running, but I can take a look at my data from the front end just to confirm that it's there. 
and I can see for the last hour, yes, it has been here. The data has been collected. It's been imported back. It's not missing. Good. Now we can drop the old tables. The commands to do so, once again, are available in documentation. They're simple drop commands. Drop table history old, drop table history uint old, and so on. So now that the tables have been dropped, my history has been upgraded to using primary keys. Let's uh, quit from my SQL. And let's start Zabbix server system control start Zabbix server. And let's take a look at Zabbix server log. Var log Zabbix Zabbix server. We can see it has been started successfully. And we can see there is no more error message about your history tables could use an upgrade. This has been successful. And that's that. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you can now upgrade to 6.0 and use all of the nice features that 6.0 delivers. And if you're willing to do so, upgrade your history so it uses primary keys for better performance and less of a size for the history tables. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day, everyone, and enjoy Zabbix 6.0. Bye.